Welcome back to the 22nd part in this Python series on the Django Web Framework and in this one we're going to continue working on that password reset form and getting the user to be able to click that link in their email so that they can reset their password. So in the last one we finished with this error and it was because we haven't def defined a URL with the name password reset confirm so let's just go and define that in our urls.py file. So I'm just going to copy the existing one here because it's sort of quite similar. I'm going to say confirm and this is the password reset confirm view. So I showed you the source code to where these views are in the last video so you can watch that if you're not sure. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to import this. Now this line is getting a little bit long so I'm just going to uh, use the brackets here to separate it out on two separate lines. And then I'm going to also import the password reset confirm. So just like that, and now that is going to know what it's talking about when I say password reset confirm. I also need to change the name so that it matches what it's looking for here. So password reset confirm rather than done. And now if we look at this, we should see that it's still going to give us an error. The development server's just refreshed. You can see on the on the left hand side here. I'm going to say continue, and it's still saying, uh, you know, we still get an error. But it says one pattern tried, and it says account reset password confirm. Now that is finding the URL, and it's still not working. So why is that? Well, the keyword arguments that it's trying to send to that URL, uh, it's actually trying to give us a couple of things. So it's giving us a token, and this UIDB64, uh, that's the name of this thing which is sending and it doesn't really matter what that data is but what you need to know is that it sends that data to the URL so that the the Django application the URL knows that it's that particular user that is trying to reset the password rather than someone else because if it was just reset password forward slash confirm anyone could go to it and then anyone could just reset anyone's password, which is obviously a really, really bad design choice. So instead, what we're going to need to do is send some data to that URL, so it, it provides that data, uh, so the, the password reset view provides all that data for us to send, and it's, this view actually puts it into, oh sorry, this view, the password reset that we're importing, it actually sends it in the email so when it generates this email, this is the line in the email template that's built into Django that it's using to send the email to the user. And what it's doing is it's trying to send the data to the URLs. And I've copied and pasted this so I don't waste time typing it out, but I'm, I'm going to paste that regular expression in. And what this is saying is that it's going to accept the two variables, so the UIDB64 and the token, which are the things that we are getting sent from that view to the URL uh, in this error message and that was why it wasn't working uh, so now it's going to to be able to try to send that email using this email HTML template so if we refresh this now we should get a different error so this error if you see this error it means that you're trying to send an email because if we look here we should see this from uh, the send mail function which is the function in Django so you can do send mail. So looking at the Django documentation here we have the send mail function that's built into Django in Django call mail and it uses this so the view that we imported uses this function to try to send that email and when this send mail function can't send an email for whatever reason it says this error so connection refused means that our email settings are wrong and we can't send the email as a result of that. Now this is quite valid because it's trying to send an email but we don't know, uh, we don't have an email server or anything like that to send it through to be able to send an email to the user. So it's fair enough that it fails here at this point uh, because we don't have that set up. But what we, what we can do is we can fake that. So we can set up what is effectively an SMTP email server uh, for development and debugging purposes so that we can see the email from the user's perspective and so what I'm going to do, I've just googled, so if you just google this error uh, you can get to this stack overflow and 
if you scroll down a bit, so I'll leave a link to this Stack Overflow in the description in case you want to look at it yourself and copy the code. But what it says is basically run this line of code, that's going to set up the debugging server uh, at localhost on port 1025. And we just have to add the corresponding settings to our Django settings file. So let's just go ahead and do that. Again, if you want to copy the code, just click the link in the description. Um, and then I'm going to run this. I'm actually going to run it in a separate window. So I'm just going to do command tab if you're using item, that'll open a new window. And then I'm going to paste that in. And when I run that, it's not actually going to do anything, at least that you can see, but it is actually doing something and that's listening for any emails that are being sent uh, using those email settings. So I use a separate tab so that I can still have my development server running. So what I'm going to do now is add these two settings to the settings.py file. So email host is localhost and email port is 1025. Now you could change these if you wanted to, if that port wasn't available for whatever reason. And then all you'd have to do is change the corresponding part of that, that line, uh, setting up the debugging uh, Python SMTP server. But what I'm going to do now is add that to the settings file and I'm just going to add it right at the bottom, just like that. And so now we've got that information, uh, I should be able to see the, the development server is refreshed, so that just updates itself. And now let's go and try with this uh, email part of the terminal open. And now I'm going to, let's just move this over so you can see. And I'm going to refresh this page. So if you remember from the last video, this page, the reset password page, had a form on it where we entered the email on our account and then the Django application that we're writing should send an email to that email address that we've entered and if it corresponds with an account then it's going to send that email and hopefully it'll do all that on refresh and we should see the email here. So I'm going to refresh and say continue, I want to resubmit that form. And now it gives us the, again, another Django default template, which of course we can override uh, in a similar way uh, to how, we done, how we've done the other templates. So we just have to pass in a custom template if we want to override that. But if we look on the left, you can actually see that the email was sent to our effective user. So this is what an email would look like in the user's inbox if we just set up that email server and configured those two uh, you know, those email settings, any of the necessary settings in, in the settings.py file to correspond with that email server. But of course we haven't set that up yet, so for our purposes what we're going to use is this debugging server and that's going to be completely adequate. So you can see now that it gives us this entire email based on the template, the HTML template that was built into Django. And one of the things that this email gives us uh, remember this is from the user's perspective now, so because it's being sent to the the user's email on that account, you can see who it's sent from and to, and everything like that. But one of the things that's included in this email is this link here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the web browser, and let's just make this a bit wider again, and I'm going to go to that link. So I'm going to paste that in, and I'm going to see uh, now we get the request for another view and it's asking for password reset complete and this is the last view that we need to be able to include to make it all work fine. So I'm going to import, yes another import, and I'm going to say password reset complete and that's the last view that we're going to need to do to be able to implement this process. Uh, and this is just the final one that's just saying congratulations, congratulations, you've managed to change your password. And now I'm going to just define the URL that does that for us. So it's going to be pretty similar again to the ones we've already defined. And it's going to start with uh, reset password. And I'm going to say forward slash complete, uh, complete and then it's going to be slash and then end. So the view is going to be password reset complete and the name is going to correspond with the one on the error. So I'm going to say name is equal to the password reset complete. So 
So just like that. And that should be enough for to get rid of this error. So let's refresh and have a look. You can see there's something happening with the development server that's on on here. It's just refreshed. So let's refresh again. And now we get the opportunity to change our password. Now this should work completely now. So let's go and have a look and see what our password uh, is and if we can reset it. So I'm going to enter another password here. And I'm going to say change my password. Now remember this is the Django template but we can of course change all that and make it customised if we want to. We're now logged in using that new password so that's how you send an email to the user with that reset password link and have them be able to click it, reset their password and log in with that new password.